So we have some other examples. So there's other examples of quote unquote lost cosmonauts. Um, about 1959, so that would put us after Sputnik, before Yuri Gagarin, uh, a high ranking Czech communist claimed that there was many unofficial space shots. And he listed that uh, Alexei Ladovsky launched inside a converted R5A rocket. And then he said also these dudes were Andre Mitkoff, uh, Sergei Shaborin, and uh, Maria Gromova, first woman we're hearing about. Progressive. Yeah, in 59. So this is several years before. And um, in the same year, 59, uh, the space theoretician uh, Herman Oberth claimed that a pilot killed on, was killed on a suborbital ballistic flight. And uh, he provides no source. Yeah. And then uh, this Italian news agency, the Continental, reported. I wonder what that uh, means. Uh, Cuban. Mm, mm. Nice. True. <laughs> he report, they reported, repeated the claims that a series of cosmonaut deaths had occurred on suborbital flights. And uh, these were now being revealed by a high ranking Czech communists. They identified the cosmonauts as Alexei Ladowski, Sorrenti Shaborin, Andrei Mitkow, and Maria Gromov. So not the same names. Still Very no source. kind of close. And then still no source. But this next one. This next one is one of my favorites. It is a quite a stunner. Doozy. It's a doozy of a of a theory and audio to go with it. Should we listen to the audio first or do you okay. want to describe it first? I just want we'll... to tell you where this audio is coming from. So there were these two brothers who were these Italian guys. Uh uh I wanna the Judica Cordiglia brothers. It's a hyphenated name. Judica Cordiglia. It's not a Judaica store, it's Judica Cordiglia. <laughs> so we have these two bros. And they have a ham radio station, kind of um, not a pirate radio. They were amateur radio enthusiasts. So they were kind of trying to hack radio broadcasts, um, government uh, communications, anything from NORAD, all that kind of stuff. They were really interested in particularly, I think, once Sputnik launched, they became really interested in uh, trying to get space transmissions uh -huh. or transmissions from you know, base to people who were in orbit or m the machinery, whatever it is. Not scientists, not any and not in any way professionally involved in uh, aeronautics or anything like that. They were in Italy, so they could have listened to the U.S. too, but they kind of chose Russia just because it's closer and they were more secret. So their whole driving passion was to uncover secrets, secret right. transmissions. And they've submitted uh, several recordings that have been uh, used as evidence for these phantom or lost cosmonauts. And we're going to listen to one that they claim was uh, a young lady she was dying in space, possibly 1961, possibly 1963. Fun times. Here we go. All right. Here we are. And they say that her name was Ludmilla, even though there's no mention of this name on the tape. I just So she is speaking Russian, right? Yes. Okay. I did have my friend Rod translate this as best he could. Did he generally agree with the translation? Kind of. Yeah. 
She's saying, I can see a flame. I can I see a flame. I feel hot. I feel hot. 32, 32, 41, 41. That's the thing we were talking about when Rad was translating. He was like, she's definitely listing numbers. That's, I hear her listing numbers. I don't know about the rest of it. It's kind of mumbled. So she's saying, am I going to crash? Yes, yes. I feel hot. I feel hot. I will re-enter. I will re-enter. I am listening. I feel hot. Right. That is the recording. Obviously, it is garbled significantly. The audio quality, not fantastic. And um, yeah, that's the that's what they reported to say was a, uh, a female cosmonaut named Lamilla who is re- trying to re-enter the atmosphere and was burning up and dying. In 1965, uh, Carrere de la Serre, which is an Italian newspaper, publishes report of the brothers' intercepts, including the reported death of a female cosmonaut lost on uh, November 10th, 1963. Fun fact, November 10th, my birthday. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday, Laura. It's right in between uh, Kristallnacht and Veterans Day. Oh, wow. So the brothers say that the heart-rending voice can be heard reporting increasing temperatures that the capsule burns up in the atmosphere. <gasps> I mean, it does... Dramatic. It does sound like that. It's just a matter of whether it's real. True. It is, of course. Yeah, that is the question. So in 1962, in uh, the issue of Fate magazine... Sounds very credible. Use code uh, on pops at checkout to get 15% off your subscription. <laughs> to Fate Magazine. I imagine guys who are into like ladies' gloves and shoes would also read <laughs> Fate Magazine. I don't know why. Journalist and radio personality Frank Edwards published an article entitled Those Lost Soviet Astronauts. Dude, say fucking cosmonauts, you jackal. An right. Asshole, which made headlines across the globe. Uh, 1965, Edwards' book Strange World was published and it had a chapter entitled The First Woman in Space. And they sort of uh, go back and say that this was, yeah, the first woman in space. And well, he claims where, it was a married couple. He claims it was a married couple, but the the linking factor here is uh, the linking fact is uh, the name Ludmilla. The, the name has just been attached to it, but it doesn't come from anywhere. Yeah, there's no. She doesn't say the name. No. In the video or in the audio. No. There's no. I'm assuming there's no record of a Russian cosmonaut with that name. Nope. Because. <laughs> They didn't send a woman to space till 63. So they only started training women in 61, 61 or so. Uh, yeah, it is just garbage. Um, okay, here, okay, here we go. This is the history of women in space and the cosmonaut program. So the director of cosmonaut training, uh, Nikolai Kamenin, got in the idea, he got in the mood to start training some women because he read in the U.S. media that um, after Yuri's flight in 61, they were training female pilots to be astronauts. So this dude was like, oh, my God, the Americans are going to start putting women into space. In his diary, he wrote, we cannot allow that the first woman in space will be American. This will be an insult to the patriotic feelings of Soviet women. (laughs) (laughs) So five female uh, cosmonauts began training in 63. So they report that this woman was crashing in 61. 61, right. And then the other guys who say that the high-ranking Czech communists, he listed a woman's name in 59. So it would be four years too early. Right. Kind of bizarre. Uh, it's hilarious, though, that he really thought that uh, the Americans were serious about training women because they didn't send a woman in space until 1983. Yeah, this is America, pal. Ugh, yikes. Yeah, so those papers were saying that this was, you know, a real deal. And uh, Edwards, that dude, Frank Edwards, who's the writer for Fate magazine in his book, he claims that there was a married couple. <laughs> That was in space that died in this instance. And their names were Lyudmila and Anatoly Tokov. And they died in each other's arms in a manufacturing capsule. Man- manufacturing. Malfunction. <laughs> manufacturing Sorry, capsule. Sorry, I got a call. It like, on the, like on the second season of The Wire. <laughs> they got a loom. <laughs> Jesus. Kill me. Uh, malfunctioning capsule. And uh, so they say in 61 that a couple stations claim that this ha- they got transmissions of this. Madun Station, Bochum, Uppsala, Torabert, which is where the Judica, uh, Judica, oh God, their names, Judica Cordiglia Brothers <laughs> just rolls <laughs> off the tongue. It really does. Easy peasy. Uh, they say that they got these uh, two cosmonauts in this capsule. capsule. Uh, they say they got this broadcast and then initially they said the conditions were satisfactory and then... With hesitation, they say, we can read the dials. The signals are not clear. However, we see nothing. 
Then after a five second gap, uh, a woman's voice breaks in. I'll make it and hold tight with my right hand. Only this way we can maintain equilibrium. Look out the people. Look out the people. I have it. Then a male voice cries out. Here, here is something. There is something. It's difficult. If we do not get out, the world will never hear about it. It is difficult. See that? I can't picture people in their dying moments being like, the world will never hear about it. No! It's like, what? Exactly. I can picture them being like, it's hot. It's hot. I'm going to die. I'm burning up. I see a flame. Yeah. But they're not going to be like, the world will never know. What? Uh, Exactly. Um, The main issue that people have with the recordings of the brothers, Judica Cordiglia brothers, and their recordings in general, um, the Russian spoken on them is pretty shit. Yeah. You have to you have to use the information that we have about who the cosmonauts were. Highly educated military people. Right. And these transmissions You can't be dumb to go into space. Like no. that it, the the two things are not conducive. You have to be extremely physically fit, extremely intelligent and have a military background. Yeah. Essentially. So these guys and ladies were uh, supposed to be Soviet Air Force pilots, but on these recordings they don't follow any standard communication protocols including identifying themselves when speaking and they don't use correct technical terminology. Yeah. That's, that's a pretty clear sign that this is a fake. Yeah. The tapes contain very poor Russian, broken grammar, gibberish phrases. And, uh, Russian is difficult because obviously massive country, um, very dialects and stuff. So a lot of people have differing opinions about what those recordings actually say. Right. Based on, you know, differences in dialects and the, shitty audio quality fun fact though uh the judica cordiglia's their sister was learning russian to help them with translation and her level of russian was pretty consistent with what the tapes showed oh imagine that oh just old sis over there and they they have and and then they get a woman's voice oh weird and there's supposed to be a man in that capsule too and you're not hearing his voice um i don't know i've not heard the one where it's the man and the woman i haven't heard that because i've actually heard the audio of i've heard of it but not the audio yeah Weird. Weird. That is pretty much the case. So the the first woman in space, I was talking about this earlier, was this woman named Valentina. I'm like, I don't know her last name right now. Um, she went in 63 and I got pretty pissed. This is just a side note about conspiracy theory stuff, which is I'm watching this like TED Talk video of this dude talking about these brothers. And he's talking about Valentina, who was chosen to be the first woman in space. And uh, he pretty much claimed that she was just a, a factory worker and that she was chosen because she expressed that she wanted to go to space because it would bring honor to the Soviet Union. He doesn't mention that she was an amateur parachutist. Oh, wow. That would help. Yeah. Because Soviet cosmonauts at this time, when they reentered the Earth's atmosphere, uh, the U S space program has the advantage of landing in water uh, with all our oceans. And uh, Soviets had to land in the Soviet Union, they had to land on land, which is very hard and dangerous. So they had to parachute out of the spacecraft between twenty and 10,000 feet. Ah. Which you have to think about the physical exhaustion and the, the way that it tears at your body of going into space. And then you have to fucking parachute. Yeah, that's a lot. That's so much work. So the Russians were tasked with finding women who could be cosmonauts who knew how to parachute. Mm. Yeah. And Valentina was an amateur parachutist. She had become fascinated by parachuting and skydiving and was known to do this all the time. She was a woman who, in the late 50s, was into parachuting. She's pretty fucking spectacular. Yeah. She's not like some fucking Bolshevik, Cossack, whatever, with a woman with a, you know, kerchief, yeah. just like <laughs> grubbing for soup. It's just so, it's still so insulting the way some people talk about the Soviet Union and their yeah. accomplishments. So that's my side note, which is that stuff's bullshit. Yeah. So annoying. Still goes on. Even people who purport to be interested in debunking misinformation. So, yeah. so what do we think about lost cosmonauts? Lost cosmonauts. Ooh. I don't. No, yeah, I'm not convinced. I'm not. I'm convinced. not. There's not enough evidence out there that convinces me this isn't just propaganda of some sort right. meant to discredit whatever Russia did do. I mean, it's possible that they sent someone up there and fucked up and they covered the story up, but. I feel like that would be more a part of American history. Like we mm-hmm. kept pretty close tabs on the Soviet Union during this time. Yes. And I feel like if their space program was littered with instances of cosmonauts going into orbit and dying, mm-hmm. I feel like we'd know. 
we do know about some deaths. Yeah. So why don't we know about these other ones conclusive, right. as conclusively as we know about the other ones? Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't, it make, doesn't any, make sense. Doesn't make any goddamn sense. Doesn't make any goddamn sense. Oh, kill them all. Um, great album. Uh, <laughs> I am not. I am not convinced of this case, but I do think in general, the lack of knowledge about these theories points to uh, America's in, you know, Americans still to this day have been kind of brainwashed by a lot of the anti-Soviet propaganda that we've been fed. And we have huge gaps in our knowledge of what the USSR did and what they were able to accomplish, you know, huge highs, huge lows. Yeah, for sure. Obviously, godless, godless monsters. Absolutely. So that's what I took away from (laughs) It was fucking epic. You know, it's just everything's on such an epic scale. It was so weird. It's so many overlapping stories and it's Russia. So maybe there will be a podcast about it someday. I don't know. I mean, nah. in my dreams, in my dreams, in my dreams. So come on, be my podcast tonight. <laughs> so that's that's the Lost Cosmonauts the Lost episode. Cosmonauts. Next week, we begin an endeavor dun, dun, dun. that, uh, it's going to take a lot of a lot out of us. It could kill us. It could because there's a lot to sift through. We are going to start recapping the ancient aliens conspiracy, which is vast enough that there are 14 seasons of a television Ooh. show about it. They are so needy for content. Do you think we could get George Sakalis or whatever to come in? I think we probably could. I, I think, yeah, I think he probably lives in SoCal. And in terms of conspiracy podcasts, like we're we're pretty big. Like, there's a yeah. guy who has, like, 3,000 Twitter followers who has a fucking serious you know radio what? show. I'm sure we send him, you know, we promise him a smoothie, a couple joints. He'll show up. We'll get him an unpop scarf. Yeah. I, we could Scarf have. he can wear. So, yeah, we're going to, next next week, Patreon only. Maybe we'll put the first one out for free. Yeah. but Or snap it. We're going to be recapping Ancient Aliens S1E1, Ooh. baby. Get to hear how many different ways people can say the word technology yeah technology and it uh one thing you can tell about the first season of ancient aliens is they didn't expect there to be a season two. Oh no <laughs> because they pack they pack a lot into season er, into episode one and then all of that shit has its own episode oh god later. good god it, it is. is it is a vast conspiracy and i can't wait to dive it into is it 10 pounds of shit in a five pound bag it is yeah it is out of control all right. Until then, we should get out of here. What do we have to plug? You can follow me on Instagram at Adam Todd Brown, Todd with one D, and on Twitter, but ugh, Twitter. And like, I have Facebook, but whatever. Mm. Fucking no. Mm, right on. I'm kind of similar. Uh, my handle is Crawford Comic. You can find me on there on YouTube as well. And, uh, you know, we can uh, have a little chitty chitty chat. Chitty chitty bang bang chat chat. Little chit chat. Little chitty chat. Little chit chat. Yeah, leave some comments, you know, rate. I'd like to hear what you guys think of this since, uh, you know, this is Adam's gig. Uh, he, this is his ship. This is his baby. It's all of our gig. No, I mean, I took it out for spin and uh, hopefully we brought it back in mint condition. I think we did. Sweet. I, I think we good. brought it back in minter condition. I feel good. I feel like I spritzed this with some peppermint oil and now it is divine. Exactly. Heaven sent. All right. Let's get the fuck out of here. Laura, say goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. We love you. <laughs>